If this happens to you, do not open the door. Once there was a girl named Donna who lived with her father, but he went out of town for a business trip, so Donna was left alone in the house. Then one night, she heard the doorbell ring. She went downstairs and was about to open the door, assuming it was her father, but she stopped. Something wasn't right. She looked through the people and saw her father staring back at her. His eyes were wide open and he looked terrified, but the doorbell kept ringing. Donna said, Dad, did you forget your keys? No answer. Dad, say something. Still no answer. Donna said, I'm not opening the door until you say something. Eventually, the ringing stopped and Donna fell asleep. The next morning, she looked through the people again. Her father was still there as if he hadn't moved all night. She finally opened the door and what she saw horrified her. Her father's head was hanging from above the door and there was a note attached to the doorbell with only two words, clever girl. Customize your necklace any way you want. Get personalized jewelry with your name or absolutely any word. Yes, any word. Why sun necklace? We'll ask our 30,000 customers. Really Wear this one literally every single day. Yeah. We include an exquisite jewelry box with every order for free. You can choose between three colorways, more than 30 styles, and all of our necklaces are waterproof, which means no more green skin. Shop now with 55% off, plus free shipping. Surprise your loved ones or yourself with a truly unique gift. Link in the description. Sun necklace, personalized for you. If you scare easily, I wouldn't watch this video. In 2013, a mine explorer found this entrance to an abandoned mine and decided to go have a look around. He decides to film his experience and upload it to his YouTube channel where he had uploaded hundreds of other videos of him exploring mines, but he never once references the paranormal or ghosts or anything like that until this video. As soon as he steps foot inside, he tells the camera that he has a really uneasy feeling about being there and wonders if he should even keep going, but he does. Everything seems pretty normal until he gets to a section in the mine where there's a bunch of chains hanging down from the ceiling. He hears something in the back of the tunnel, so he pulls his flashlight out and he shines it towards the back and he sees a chain swinging and it shouldn't be because there's no draft and he's all alone and you can tell he's scared by the way he starts talking. Although he's totally freaked out, he wants to know what's causing the chain to swing, so he goes farther and farther into the mine until he hears something. People whispering in every direction. He gets totally spooked and runs out. If you don't want to sleep tonight, watch the whole video. This is why you should always lock your front doors. A kid living with both of his parents decided to watch a movie for their family weekly movie night. He then gets up to use the restroom. As he is in the restroom, he sees all of the power in the house cuts off. And then he hears two loud thumbs. He locks the bathroom door and hears heavy objects being dragged across the hallway. The kid freaking out runs out of the bathroom and runs into the restroom. Once he is inside the room, he locks the door. As he locks the door, he jumps in bed and acts like he's asleep in hopes that this person who is in the house will ignore a child sleeping. He closes closes his eyes and hears the door creak at the same time. He squints his eyes and sees a man with no eyes dragging the bodies of both of his parents. The man dragging his parents sits his mom's dead body in a chair facing him and then sets the dad's body on the floor facing up. It was almost like whoever was in the house who killed them wanted him to see it. He then sees the man writing something on the wall and then climbs under his bed. He laid there for hours knowing that if he moved a muscle, he would end up just like his parents. He finally built up enough courage to read the wall and the writing on the wall said, I Story time on how I slept with my brother. Okay, so boom, let's jump right into it. And I mean, we really gonna get straight to the point here. So I have a brother, he's 12 and I'm 18. And yes, he is my full biological brother. Me and my brother have always been really close ever since we were little. We did everything together. From bubble bats when we were young, to watching all our favorite shows and movies together, to even playing sports together. We were always just super close and inseparable. My mom and dad would leave us home alone while they were at work they were way too cheap to get a babysitter and i eventually got to an age where i could look after both me and my brother years of constant alone time and good vibes led us to one day watching a netflix movie and cuddling a scene came on that was a bit risque and it kind of just set the mood me and my brother looked at each other and we just started kissing and eventually right there on the couch we did the nasty i can follow for part two Part 2 on how I slept with my brother. Okay, so boom, like I said, after watching Netflix and cuddling, me and my brother looked in each other's eyes and then we started kissing. And then that led to us doing the nasty right on the couch. And yes, this is my biological brother. Ever since that day, whenever we're home alone, we continue to sleep with each other and have great times and memories. One day, my mom came home early and seen us on the couch kissing. She ran over to us, separated us, and started screaming. She told our dad and we got in big trouble. They talked to us about how this is inappropriate 
inappropriate and how brothers and sisters aren't supposed to be intimate but they don't know that we went all the way they placed cameras all over the house and now me and my brother never have a chance to be with each other i know it's wrong but they won't stop us we'll find another way to be together because we're in love wish me luck guys Am I the asshole for not wearing a wedding ring and making my coworker think I'm single? I, female 30, started working at a company recently. I get along with my coworkers, but have been having some issues with this guy, Morgan. Morgan, from what I understand, is what everyone calls the handsome guy in the office. He dated two of his coworkers and hit on several others. He seemed friendly, we talked, he seemed respectable, and never asked questions outside of work. He offered to buy me lunch and internet and kept sending funny memes. It was nice but felt too much so I asked that he stop and he did. He started sending me pictures of him that were inappropriate. I texted back saying that I'm married and he was being inappropriate. Am I the asshole for not wearing a wedding ring and making my coworker think I'm single? I texted him back saying that I'm married and he was being inappropriate. He texted saying I was lying about being married to get him off my back. Then went on to say how nice and attractive he is and how I'm trying to act like I don't like him to get him to try harder. I felt frustrated, especially after he kept sending me pictures. Days ago, he sent me a d-pic and told me to it. My husband sent him a text back saying, Sorry, bud, small objects are a choking hazard for her, then blocked him. The other day, he came in my office looking furious and confronted me. He said I misled him by not having a wedding ring when I'm married, and that I should have told him I was married from the get-go. Alright, so a lot of you guys asked me to give my opinions on stories now, so I'm going to try to start doing it. On this specific story, a wedding ring does not determine marriage. Marriage determines marriage. If she wants to wear the ring or if she doesn't is up to her, but in the Reddit post, she said she doesn't wear one because of a skin condition. She didn't owe us an explanation if you ask me because if you want to wear it, you do. If you don't, you don't. I feel like he could have just asked her, are you single? or are you you know um available and he did not do that also he asked her out to lunch and asked to pay her internet and she said no like and to stop asking things like that turn him down and he said okay so why after that encounter situation why would you then think it's okay to send a pee pee picture like you're weird he's the asshole she's not the asshole this is just crazy so that's my opinion Story time about how my boyfriend pretended to be in love with me to get close to my mom. My boyfriend and I had been dating for two months. It started with anonymous emails. He started sending me love letters, I guess. Me being a love-deprived teenager, I fell into it. Started writing back to him asking who he was and he told me he was my secret admirer. To be honest with you guys, this was totally thrilling to me. It was the first time ever I was getting attention from a guy. Whenever I had a crush on a guy, they would never ever talk to me. Like, they wouldn't even know I existed. Mostly because I'm super shy and I never talk to guys. But I'm also just not very confident and I have very low self-esteem. Clearly, he took advantage of that. After a month of us writing to each other, I finally asked him if he wanted to meet with me. Keep in mind, he did not ask to meet me. I'm the idiot that asked him to meet me. I asked him to meet me out in a mall because obviously I thought it was safer to meet in a public place. When we first met, he was totally charming and really cute. He gave me my first kiss and I was totally in love with him. Like literally right then and there, I was in love. And he even asked me to be his girlfriend that very same day. And of course I said yes. But here's the thing. He asked me to keep the relationship a secret from my parents. I asked him why and he said that they probably wouldn't like that he was a little bit older than me. I was 17 and he was 22. So I had a secret relationship now. Part two is up. Storytime about how my boyfriend used me to get close to my mom. After he told me not to tell my parents about our relationship, I got really upset. I told him I didn't feel comfortable with that. But of course, he managed to convince me. So I had a boyfriend at 17 and he was 22. And it was a secret. A few weeks after our relationship, he started sneaking into my house. He would come up to my bedroom and we would only kiss. But here's where it gets scary. One time my parents were out and he wanted to go into my parents' bedroom. And when we did, he went straight to my mom's underwear drawer. He even started looking through her closet. And he opened up all of her drawers and looked through everything. I kept telling him we needed to get out of my parents' room in case if they came home, but he wouldn't. And he went 
into my parents' bathroom and started looking through everything. And when he thought I wasn't looking, he sprayed some of my mom's perfume on him. At the time, I thought he was just playing around. A few days later, my mom started asking me if I had seen some of her underwear. I told her I didn't, but I knew what had happened. My boyfriend stole two pairs of my mom's underwear. I was so scared and disgusted. I asked him to come over to my house again, and he did. He snuck up through my window, and as soon as he did, I asked him about my mom's underwear. That's when he got really angry at me and started telling me that I was crazy. He even called me a pervert. Part three is up. Story time about how my boyfriend used me to get close to my mom. After my mom told me that her underwear had disappeared, I confronted my boyfriend. I knew that he had stolen them. But when I confronted him, he denied it and called me a pervert. Finally, a few days later, my parents came to me and told me that my mom had a stalker and that he must have been the one that stole my mom's underwear. That's when I confessed everything to them. I told them I had a secret boyfriend who was a little bit older than me and that he came into our house and that I let him go into my parents' bedroom and search my mom's closet and bathroom. My mom started to cry and my dad was really angry. They called the cops right away. Come to find out that my boyfriend had been stalking my mom for six months. He he apparently met her at the gym and he couldn't get over her and that he started talking to me because he wanted to get close to her my mom finally got a restraining order and he told the police that i was an easy target and that he only started talking to me because he wanted to get into our house but get this he had snuck into our house several times before when i was home by myself he even took a nap in my parents bed he had stolen over 40 things from my mom and he had a shrine of her in his house i'm totally traumatized and will never trust a man again what should i do story time on how i caught both of my best friends cheating on me with my boyfriend yes both of them so at the time i was entering college and one of my best friends went to the same school as me my other best friend went to the same school as my boyfriend and our schools were close we were only like 10 minutes away from each other homecoming is when things started to get fishy i asked my boyfriend if he wanted to come out to our homecoming games and he said that he was busy then of course i asked my best friend but she said she had cheerleading practices because she was trying to become a cheerleader I don't know, they just always seem busy doing something around the same time. So then the holiday comes up and I visit my boyfriend's family for Christmas. I don't know, something in me just told me to look at his phone. And he was talking to my best friend, the one he went to school with. And the conversation was just too flirty. So I talked to my other best friend about it that I went to the same school with. And she was like, oh, I always knew something was weird about them too. Of course, confronted my boyfriend about it. And he said nothing was going on. So I decided to play reverse psychology on my best friend. Come back for part two. Part two on how I caught my boyfriend cheating on me with two of my best friends. Like I said, I confronted my boyfriend about it and he pretended there was nothing going wrong. So I went to my best friend about it and I kind of did like a reverse psychology thing on her. I told her that my boyfriend told me everything that was going on. And I was like, did y'all even use protection? Not really knowing what's really going on. And she was like, I'm sorry, it was only a one-time thing. And that she was just drunk one night. And I was like, sis, you practically told on yourself because I was joking. And then she kind of like snitched on my other best friend. She was like, I wasn't the only one, you know. And I, of course, I was like, what you mean? And she said a couple months back when we were in high school that my other best friend had slept with him also. The whole situation was just messy. I ended up cutting off my whole circle. And later on that freshman year, my ex-boyfriend started dating my ex-best friend. This is why you should not listen to your teacher. Once something terrifying happened to Sophia when she got to school. She went to class as usual when her teacher burst into the room and said, Sophia, I have some bad news. She was shocked and embarrassed to be called out like that in front of her whole class. Her teacher then said, get your things. I just got off the phone with your father. He said your mom was in a horrible accident and he's going to pick you up now and take you to the hospital. Sophia instantly froze in horror. She tried to explain, but her teacher kept interrupting her. Why are you just standing around? Get your things now. But Sophia wouldn't move. She knew something wasn't right. She said, I don't have a father. He passed away long ago and I never got to meet him. I was raised by a single mother all my life. To this day, Sophia still doesn't know who that man was claiming to be her father and what he planned to do if she had gone with him. This is the weirdest, most toxic marriage I've ever seen in the history of life. So this is Linda and one day she was just hanging out at the Bronx when all of a sudden a car pulls up, stops in the middle of the street and out comes good old Bert. He was a successful attorney and he was like, listen, you're the most beautiful person that has ever existed. Please date me. So she does and they start dating and it was really cute in the beginning and then she finds out that he has a wife and a kid at home. Now you would think that Linda would be the one that would be mad, but Bert got mad and he said, listen, if I can't have you, ain't nobody gonna have you. And when I'm done with you, nobody's gonna want you, end quote. She reported it to the police and they didn't really do anything. So she ends up moving on and gets engaged to a guy by the name of Larry. So when Bert finds out about the engagement, he decides to hire someone to throw acid in her face. This will leave her eventually permanently blind and scarred. So Bert gets sent to prison for 14 years. And when he's released, this is the kicker. He proposes to Linda. And she deadass accepts. And they get married. She said that the best revenge for blinding her was now that he has to put up with her every day. The disgusting story time is here. I'm literally taking a Tom so I don't throw up everywhere. No, I'm even kidding. 
If you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw me post about a disgusting story time and how I had the worst day ever and blah, blah, blah. As many of you are aware, I have a crazy bathroom problem. It just leaks all the time, poop water and pee and all this stuff due to my crazy neighbors upstairs, pretty much. Well, they are gone now, so we just thought that our days of misery were over, but we were wrong. So the other day, uh, my roommate was home, thank the Lord. So she's just in her room minding her own business and she starts to hear like a trickling noise. So she goes into my room to see this um, coming from my bathroom, which is inside of my room, and it's just leaking all over. So my poor roommate just frantically is grabbing things off of my floor, important things like, you know, my laptop and just like, you know, anything she can get that's not wet already. I feel like no one else looks this crazy when they do their makeup. Like, do I, am I the only one who looks insane? So anyways, my roommate calls the emergency maintenance number. We're like regulars at this point. It's actually kind of sad. So my roommate gets the water turned off. The maintenance guys get up there and they start vacuuming up all the water, I guess. Meanwhile, I'm at work just chilling. <laughs> I literally have no idea that any of this is happening. And I mean, I was having like a fairly good day. My roommate had actually won stagecoach tickets earlier that day and invited me to go with her. So she called me when she knew I was going to be on my way home from work. And she's like, Chels, I'm literally about to ruin your day. Like, brace yourself. And I'm just like, dang it. Like, we didn't win stagecoach tickets. Like, darn. And she's just like, baby girl, your whole room flooded. She said at one point it was even covering her feet. Poor thing was like trudging through the water in my room trying to save all my stuff. I love her so much. I literally thought she was kidding for the first like 10 minutes that she was telling me about this. But once I realized she was being serious, I could not even like get a word out for like five minutes. I was just in shock. So yeah, I basically get home and walk inside and have a literal mental breakdown. Everything under my bed had to be thrown out. Um, I have all my PR just like piled in these little fabric like little bins that got ruined. Not to mention the uh, dried up toilet paper and feminine products from other people just dried up on my floor. I was literally up till four in the morning going through all my stuff, like seeing if it was okay or not. But anyway, long story short, the maintenance guy told us that when the people above us like flush things that aren't supposed to be flushed, it basically backs up the plumbing or whatever and it just comes out of our toilet because we're at the bottom level. And I'm just like, no, that is not supposed to happen. Sorry. And I know everyone's going to tell me, oh my gosh, you need to sue them, like blah, blah, blah. We tried. We tried reaching out to multiple lawyers and all of them said that we don't have a case because they fix it every single time, even though they don't. We are in this lease for four more months, so stay tuned if you want to find out if we live or not. Also, follow me on Instagram for more antics. Actually, hopefully no more antics. Me, 34, and my husband, Hunter, 37, suffered from fertility problems. We recently decided to get a surrogate who's a friend of a friend. We were busy getting everything done legally. We already had a contract in place. My egg was used, so no worries in this regard. Plus, our surrogate is a respectful, kind woman who's been keeping her part of the contract intact. But it's Hunter who started acting strange. I've noticed that he's been focusing all his attention on our surrogate, like skipping work to visit her or get her things that she didn't ask for, chat with her all the time on social media, and also constantly offering to do things for her, like drive her to places and sometimes even invite her out or offer to repair stuff for her. She complained to me about this and even told me about things that he's been doing that I didn't even know about, like bringing her gifts. I tried speaking to him about what this looks like, but he said that he's doing what he's doing for his son and not her. Still, I asked that he tone it down and respect the woman's space. He got mad at me and accused me of being jealous of the woman who's carrying my own child and said that this makes me look bad. I said our surrogate was the one who complained about his behavior and he said that this wasn't true. Apparently, this made him somewhat angry, so I gave him time to cool down a bit. Yesterday, our surrogate called me saying that Hunter came over and told her guests to leave. I asked why and she said that he wanted to show her the 9k car that he bought for her. I was shocked. She said that she declined the car and asked him to leave, but he started arguing with her about using public transportation and risking our baby's well-being. I was fuming and I called him to that he get home and he eventually did. Once he got back, I picked up a fight with him and yelled at him saying that he's been nothing but overstepping, disrespectful, and inappropriate towards the surrogate. Again, he explained that the car wasn't for her but to ensure the baby is safe. I told him to stop disrespecting the woman and stop using the baby as an excuse to stomp all over her boundaries. He ranted about how he's just trying to make this work and I should do the same if not more. He even accused me of not loving our son as much as he does but this is in the way and putting $9,000 on a car without telling me? He left the house for a while and then he came back and refused to speak to me. I might have been hard on him. He might have just been oblivious so I'm less sure seeing his reaction now. Am I the asshole for telling my husband to stop disrespecting our surrogate?